Hey, hello YouTube, this is APPC23 and if you're watching this video you probably already know what the Unlimited Dedal Engine is and you may also have come across a number of videos involving Euclideon and in particular their Unlimited Dedal Engine. For example, this is a pretty well-known video. This is the impressive showcase of their, their technology from 2011. Now, as the title says, I'm here to present my idea of how this very inter interesting technology may actually work. I did some research on the internet and this uh, this trick I'm going to show you in this video can be actually a very simple yet effective approximation of how it works in reality, if I can say so. Now a little bit of explanations before getting to the point. If you come at me and you tell me that you have an algorithm that can solve a problem independently from the size of the input data, then the first thing I think of is that you have a so-called constant time algorithm. In other words, if you have an array of data of like 10 elements and an array of 10,000 elements, then your algorithm should operate on these arrays and solve the problem in a fixed amount of time which is independent in any way to the data size. For instance, if you have a program that does something like grab the second element of this array. Then it doesn't really matter if your array is 1000 elements big, you just need the second element. Ok, so about 3D graphics, we can reformulate the problem this way. How we define the exact point in space which is closest to a given ray? I mentioned rays because actually we are going to do some sort of ray casting through an arbitrary cloud of points but uh, we do that in a very, very indirect way. And the key is sorting data. Sorting is essential to this purpose. Let me show you. Consider this as your array of random points, and this uh, is a two-dimensional space with origin in O. Now, given a array, we want to determine which point is closest. For instance, uh, here is your array, uh, as you can see, the ray uh, is basically a vector and can be defined as an angle. So, what if we want to organize our points in the array so that they can be quickly located using just an angle value? The solution is sorting them by slope with the origin and the horizontal axis. Uh, well, if we don't do sorting, uh, then uh, we are stuck at uh, stepping through all the geometry and calculating angles for all the points and we are actually trying to avoid such a thing. Oh well, now as we sort points... Uh, okay, the first one is B, which is uh, makes the smallest angle, then there is A, then C, D and so on. Okay, then, if we have this ray right there, that uh, um, does this angle with the horizontal axis, we want to use somehow this angle of the ray to look up the exact closest point. It's very simple, actually. We use it as an index on this array. So what we want to do is to actually project this uh, angle in this array and use it as an index. For example, well actually, okay, this is more than B and slightly less than A, so it is approximately here, our, uh, our angle. Then what we do is to round it to the nearest uh, integer, and we use it as an index, and what we got is that A is the solution. This A is the closest point uh, to the ray by the angle. Since we don't step through the geometry, this algorithm is just a lookup thingy which works at constant time. What it actually does is pick a value and that's basically it. This is a very direct and crude implementation of the above explanation. I did it in Blitz Basic for demonstration purposes because it is a very easy to understand language so that I'm not holding you for too long and still pretty fast. Okay, let me start it out. Here it is. 
as you can see we got our space and then the cloud and then the ray spinning around currently there are 100 points but I want you to keep an eye on the FPS counter up there now the program is grabbing a single point which is supposed, supposed to be the closest to the ray right now we are shooting just a one ray so the program runs, runs very fast Consider also that I'm recording the video, but since I got a dual core processor, then I suppose that the, the recording software is running on the other processor, so it should not it interfere much with, with um, what I'm doing. By the way, specs of this uh, computer are listed in the, in the description section below. Now, I have to tell you a little something, but before that I will just... Um, uh, multiply by a factor of 100 the number of uh, points to be generated okay here we go now always take a look at the FPS counter up there does it change? no it doesn't, it still remains steady exactly same as before uh, okay so the thing I was telling you is that this program to, to work this way, also features a trick for fixing an, off an offset issue. Uh, I will show you right now. By the way, it is not actually um, an issue, this algorithm just is supposed to work this way. Because if I... where is it? Okay. If I hide uh, this lines there and I run the program, the program again, Okay, now as you can see, the, the ray is still runs pretty fast, but is not grabbing anymore the same points as before. It has some sort of um, an offset, offset from the actual ray. I don't know, now I don't know if the YouTube quality is screwing up everything right there, but uh, should work hopefully. In fact, here we are dealing with um, a square subspace of a big round space. In other words, we can consider the box as an independent object which lies inside the space. And since we are sorting the points uh, as, as angle, um, sorting this way will imply uh, a circular shaped space. And that um, since a box does not fit well in a circular space, uh, then this is basically what uh, causes this issue. Well, we still need to fix uh, it um, in some way, so what we are going to do? Uh, what we are doing is to add an iterative search algorithm, we, call, we can call it this way, that approximates more and more the wanted point. And probably the search algorithm uh, Bruce Dell was talking about in some interviews was meant to fix exactly this kind of issue. It works by taking a first guess, which is wrong, so it calculates the difference that occurs between the sample taken and the ray, and then applies that offset to the ray itself. Better results are achieved by applying multiple times small fractions of the, of the initial offset and taking multiple samples. This of course decreases performance. And now it works somewhat better, at least. Now, in, in Euclidean's video, they claim to run their software in a window which is 1024 pixel wide and 768 height. I'm now going to simulate that many pixels by shooting many rays in a loop and see what happens. Okay, now we are grabbing data from 780,000 rays per frame. <laughs> you already notice a significant drop in performance. Uh, I can tell that uh, the main bottleneck of this program 
are uh, the arctangent functions and trigonometrics in general. Uh, of course, sorting by angle is not the way the actual unlimited detail engine works. And uh, in general, asking a CPU to perform 700,000 loops is not a nice thing to do. I guess that uh, unlimited detail engine uses some sort of uh, ray packetizing technique to limit the amount of rays to shoot, but that's just beyond my comprehension, you know. In addition, they were using um, an Intel i7 in their videos, that is a way faster CPU than the one I got. Just one last, last thing, I, um, as you may have understood, I haven't used any space partitioning method or voxel traversing technique. Just like uh, the Euclidean CAO said that um, they were not using any voxel or tree engine, so my implementation, at least in, in a very, very large range of, uh, of complexity, works uh, basically the same way. Okay, that's it, I guess. Uh, you can read the description, you'll find also a download link. Thank you for watching and uh, have a nice day.